Hello guys, in this video we are going to talk about uh, the Lucas Canade uh, approach of optical flow. So in the previous video we have discussed the Horn and Chunk approach. Now in this video we will see the Lucas Canade approach. So Horn and Chunk started with the brightness constancy assumption. So we are going to start with the same. So what does brightness constancy assumption means basically is that if suppose um, there's this object which is moving in this direction so in frame t the object is over here in frame t plus dt the object has uh, moved over here suppose so this is a video the object is moving like this so if you consider a particular pixel over here if you say this pixel over here and suppose that the pin pixel intensity over here is 23 suppose so if this is a grayscale image and the pixel intensity is 23. Now in the next frame when the pixel has moved over here, this pixel intensity should be more or less the same, equal, equivalent to 23, more or less. So that is because uh, the duration between the two frames is more or less similar. So hence this, uh, this f intensity value over here should be more or less equal to uh, the intensity value over here. So that is what this equation uh, talks about. So we have seen this uh, in the Horn and Chunk also. We started from there. So now next, if you use Taylor series on that equation, uh, you get uh, this particular result. And moving forward, you get this equation. So we have seen that this equation is nothing but an equation of a line can be represented by an equation of a line but the problem over here is that we have two unknowns that is u and v uh, u is the motion in the x direction motion of the pixel in the x direction and v is the motion of the pixel in the y direction so i have explained this uh, these all things uh, very briefly in my previous video of uh, horn and chunk optical flow with horn and chunk so you can refer to that video if uh, suppose you feel I am a bit faster over here. So yes, so we have one equation and we have two unknowns which is a problem. So now this problem was solved by the Horn and Chunk method by using the smoothness constraint. So the smoothness constraint um, gave a new kind of uh, equation uh, and then we solved those cost function, the functional and the story. So over here, Lucas Canade uh, took a different approach. What Lucas Canade did, did is as follows. Uh, suppose, uh, so before that, I'll have to explain this uh, one difference between the Horn and Chunk and Lucas Canade. So in Horn and Chunk, U was a matrix. So U was a whole matrix which had uh, the U values, that is the motion in X direction values for all the particular pixels so it is a value it is a matrix like this where uh, the u of this pixel is over here the u of the next pixel over here and the story and similarly there is a v matrix uh, the the same kind over here what lucas canade says is instead of calculating u the whole matrix together what you can do is you can calculate u uh, and v pixel by pixel wise so here lucas canade takes u of x comma y instead of the whole u so here there is uh, this f of x comma y that is uh, f derivative of this so suppose i consider this pixel over here uh, there is this f, f derivative so that uh, that we can calculate using the mask fx fy and ft we can calculate using the mask we'll see that in the further slides and uh, what we have to do is we have to calculate u and v for every pixel so that is our uh, task in lucas canada so what uh, they say is instead of one equation you can have nine equations like this you have this pixel so this pixel is uh, given so the pixels uh, equation is over here assuming that uh, the pixels in the locality that is this pixel it's above pixel below pixel left and right and the diagonal pixels all of them have the same u and v values so this is something that uh, we are going to assume so for this particular uh, case when the window is over here uh, assuming that 
all the uh, u uh, u values for these pixels is the same and i am replacing it by u so this u, so please understand this u is a scalar over here it is not a matrix as it was in the honen chunk so this u is a scalar this v is a scalar so this u is nothing but i am i have assumed that all the u values in this particular window are same all the v values in the window are same and that is what uh, gives rise to these nine equations so the fx fy and ft value for the the neighboring pixels will be different so that makes these uh, pixels uh, these equations different so now just taking all these equations as a vector in fxi taking all these equations as a vector in fyi and these equ uh, these equations uh, no i'm sorry not equations these values taking these values uh, as a vector in fti these values in fyi and these values in fxi and basically converting it to a matrix form so now that we have nine equations we can use least squares so this was the matrix that we saw in the previous slide you can take this as a you can take this as x and this as b and just use this particular formula and you'll get uh, x that is u comma v so this x that you have got is for uh, say this pixel that is over here now move the window now shift this window uh, over here and when you shift that window over here that is you will be calculating the ui for this pixel then shift it again so like this you can calculate the u comma v for every pixel and you are done you have uh, got the optical flow that you wanted so that's all actually that's uh, that simple so the lucas canada approach actually ends over here but uh, to give you a little intuition of uh, what this least squares is doing so yeah if you want to proof of how this formula has come you can see the vid uh, video over here where i've proved how this formula has come but uh, uh, instead of using this formula we can also take a different approach so this approach is like suppose we uh, define a cost function so we have nine equations so we can define a cost function like this for uh, the nine equations so just take this ti over here on the left side so that uh, should be equal to 0 but it will actually not be equal to 0 for all the nine equations because uh, what we have done is we have assumed that the u comma v values where did the pointer go yeah so uh, the we have assumed that the all the u comma v values will be same for the pixels over here but that may or may not be true because if your window is over here suppose now what will happen the u comma v for these pixels will say this direction because the car is moving in this direction and the u comma v for this pixel will almost be zero because this is stationary so that is uh, the problem so uh, this particular thing will almost be equal to zero for all the nine equations but it will not be ac the exact zero so we just square it and add the all the nine equations value and uh, define this cost and we have to just minimize this cost so uh, taking the derivative with respect to u because that is unknown will give you these equations and taking the derivative with respect to v will give you this equation so if you see just taking uh, derivative taking this two ahead and uh, <clears throat> That this thing and then by chain rule this fxi will come forward for u case and for v case fyi will come forward and if you do a little bit algebra you will get this equation for u and you will get this equation for v so now you have those two equations now just converting those to matrix form so you can see that this thing comes over here this thing comes over here this is over here this is over here you have a uv ve vector and you have this vector uh, now uh, taking this matrix over there so that will be an inverse so if you carefully see this matrix this is nothing but our Harris matrix the Harris corner detector if you have seen that video so the, the same matrix uh, the same form of the matrix is seen over here so you can see that the Harris matrix uh, comes a lot of times in computer vision uh, 
algorithms so over here if you see one particular thing that there is this inverse so if uh, the determinant of this matrix is zero the inverse will be uh, not uh, not existing so if the inverse does not exist the u and v for that particular pixel will also not exist so lucas canade has this limitation that uh, if the determinant of that particular uh, of this particular matrix is zero for a particular pixel then you cannot calculate the u comma v of that pixel but in some um, in some sense that is okay because if you see um, what is this matrix where has this matrix come from so this is uh, summation of all fxi value squared summation of fyi fxi multiplication uh, and summation basically so these these values so this values comes from these marks mask so what are these masks so to calculate fx1 you will have this mask and uh, so you convolve this particular mask with the first frame this mask with the second frame for fy this mask with the first this mask with the second and then the fx is nothing but the average of uh, these two things so you can uh, see this formulas so i have explained this in detail in my uh, previous video of hon and chunk so i'll no, not go much into deep into this so uh, the thing that i want to say is that uh, this determinant this will be zero for the stationary pixels so if uh, i take a window over here so you can see that all these pixels are stationary they have not moved anywhere in this particular window they are they are the same so for this particular pixel or actually all the pixels over here so all the pixels over here the the this will be same let me erase this yes right so for all the pixels over here the determinant value will come uh, out to be zero because there is no difference no difference in x no difference in y no difference in t so fx fy ft will almost be equal to zero due to which uh sorry due to which the determinant will be zero so it's nice we don't want to calculate u comma v for stationary pixels because that means that there is no flow over there so you actually don't want to calculate u comma v for these pixels because they are stationary so lucas canade in some sense calculates u comma v only for those uh, group of pixels which are actually moving for the pixels which are stationary uh, you just leave them because uh, they are stationary why to calculate optical flow for that so that is a good intuition that we can get from uh, the this particular approach so that is because that was the reason reason i gave this approach over here so now uh, let us see the algorithm so the algorithm is quite simple uh, you just calculate fx fy ft using the mask that i have shown over here and um, now for each pixel if the determinant is not zero so this a is nothing but this matrix over here uh, this is our a so if the determinant of this a matrix is not zero then uh, calculate u comma v using the formula the least square formula and you're done that's all that's the lucas canade approach so one big difference between the lucas canade and the hon and chunk is that the lucas canade is very fast because here you don't need any iteration so hon and chunk needed those iterations so there is no iteration over here also lucas canade is not calculating u comma v for all the values it is just calculating u comma v for those values which are actually moving so which is another uh, plus point in the lucas canade algorithm so let us see some results so there are so let us put this on this image so over here this particular um, box this white box is moved to right by uh, one pixel over here so these are the two images suppose we have suppose we run the lucas canade algorithm over this image let us see what happens so we see this kind of a beautiful plot where uh, you can uh, very nicely see that uh, uh, the pixels in the 
in that box are moved to right by one pixel so that is evident by the lucas canada algorithm and over here the u comma v are zero because uh, they have not moved so the determinant would have been zero for all these pixels and uh, you they did uh, the lucas canada did not calculate this particular u and v values for this uh, pixel so for hamburg taxi sequence we can see that the uh, if i just take two frames from the hamburg taxi sequence and calculate uh, optical flow by lucas canada approach this is the result that i get and this is the result that i get by hon and chunk you can see the result is more or less similar the difference is that hon and chunk is quite uh, quite slow and lucas canada is very fast so you can see the same over here if i um, calculate uh, so i uh, over here i have uh, run the algorithm for the whole video so if you see the video this car comes over here and uh, stops and um, that is the video ends this car comes over here this car comes over here and stops and there is a car that will come from here and it'll stop somewhere over here so you can see that is evident in the algorithm you can see these arrows uh, this blue uh, marks are nothing but arrows that i have plotted so this car is going to is in this direction and it is going to come over here and stop the same thing is evident in the hon and chunk so hon and chunk in some way you can see is more uh, giving more magnitude to the arrows and the lucas canada has relatively less magnitude but the time the time is a important factor this just take 12 seconds but uh, this takes 64 seconds and you have to set these parameters also how many iterations what is the lambda while in lucas canada you just have a window so the window can be changed i i took just a window of 9 pixels or uh, you can take a, a bigger window uh, of 5 cross 5 that is 25 pixels so that is also something that you can do so that is uh, a small difference between uh, lucas canada and hon and chunk so like this you can uh, use any approach that you like so that's all for this particular video in the, so in my um, series of computer vision with matlab i'm going to upload how to implement this algorithm in matlab so in case uh, you have not understood this algorithm uh, very nicely so over there uh, you will be able to uh, clear any doubts if you have uh, related to this algorithm So that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.